look, I'm not happy to say it. I wish that moral character could predict whether a person would be a moral leader. Moral character and moral leader are not synonymous. Uh, the the uh, and and as one who is a religious person and just wrote the book you kindly mentioned, the Rational Bible, a 500 page commentary just on the book of Exodus. Uh, I obviously am opposed to adult, adultery. I have a lot on the Ten Commandments in that book. But that's different. I mean, for example, if we know that somebody didn't honor their parents, which is also in the Ten Commandments, would that invalidate that person from being a good president or a good general? Uh, I mean, it's, it's almost, you would think that's silly. It's none of our business, but it's in the Ten Commandments, too. Look, I wrote this, by the way, this is my or a recent column, but I wrote this 25 years ago. It doesn't matter to me if it's a Democrat or a Republican. The fact is that whether or not you were faithful to your spouse doesn't predict a damn thing about whether or not you will be a good leader. God chose King David, who not only committed adultery, but had the husband killed in order to get away with it. And, and somehow God uses King David. God uses a, I'm, I'm talking now religious people, God uses a prostitute. Of all the people in Canaan, he picks a prostitute to let the Hebrews into the promised land. He could have picked the most noble person in the place. He picked a prostitute. I mean, there are, that's why, oddly enough, those of us who are particularly religious, Christians and Jews, are the most tolerant of the president's foibles because we get our wisdom from a book called the Bible and we understand that the effects on vast numbers of people are infinitely more important than their individual behavior in the sexual realm. Right, and, and, and I find this interesting. We, we've talked about this story actually not too many times because I think it's a lot of gossip, the Stormy Daniels drama. I think it's a lot of gossip and I think liberals are hypocrites about it. I think it happened a long time ago and I'm not sure that it's pertinent to what's happening in our country right. today, which might actually uh, just make your point uh, all the clearer here, but you, you don't think, and I want to push back on this just a little bit, you say adultery is frequently an inaccurate measure of a man's character. Don't you think that being able to honor a commitment such as a vow of fidelity to your wife is an indicator of the integrity of the man, though? It's an indicator of the integrity of the man in that arena, but we're very complex people. Those of your uh, viewers who have watched Schindler's List, one of the most powerful moral films of this Nazi, Nazi businessman who saved a thousand Jews' lives. This guy was a serial adulterer. Now, when he stands before God, God will say, you know, that adultery was really a sin. On the other hand, saving a thousand innocent people's lives from, from gas chambers is a greater good than the sin you committed. I am a believer because I have common sense. That's all it takes in gradations of sin and gradations of good. People have to be measured. Martin Luther King, who was killed 50 years ago today, Martin Luther King was a giant. He was also a, 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 an unfaithful husband. But we somehow understand that the good he did transcends that sin. So people are mixed bags generally. Very few people are pure good. 